Good morning everybody, my name's Paul. Uh, I'm from everythingboating.co.uk. Really exciting day today. We've got the heating engineer coming to fit our diesel heater. It's minus five and I quite frankly can't wait. Most important job of the day, get the kettle on. Nice cup of tea, nice cup of coffee. Coffee or tea mate? Coffee please. Happy days. Okay, so uh, the exciting bit, he made it. He got here through the snow, so that's absolutely amazing. Well done. This is Owen. Uh, he's uh, our plan, our heating engineer. And uh, he's just come through with a box of goodies. So let's see what we got. Quick, let's warm us up. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> so how long did it take you to get down here, Owen? Uh, about five hours. Okay. That's how long we've been sat in the boat really cold, by the way, everyone. <laughs> made us wait five hours. He only left on lunchtime. How it all comes, is it? So, oh yeah, right. this is the standard kit. So you get your warranty card okay. and your brochure. Uh, instruction manuals in there. Uh, we'll give that to my son. He reads the instructions. <laughs> then you get the fuel tank, seven liter. Okay. And you, you, you have it on a separate tank, would you? You would have rather than plumb it into the main tank? It's just a choice of how the boat works. Some people want to use it uh, with red diesel alone in road vehicles. That tends to be what it's mostly designed for. And then you can do it at half price running. Um, but so you, what about running it off the main diesel tank, would you? We also do that as well. Oh, right, um, okay. Basically, there is a, a pickup tube that comes okay. in the kit as well. Okay. Um, and that means you can then fit that in your own tank. Yeah. Um, and draw straight from there. Well, that would be good. So, warranty, how long's the warranty for these units? Two years. Two years? Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good going. Awesome. I'm not going to read the instructions. That's Matthew's job. Sure. <laughs> so, um, you get a, that's the display cable. Okay. Uh, it goes from the heater to the display at that end. Okay. Then you've got a power cable, all made up, fused. Oh, it comes with the fuse unit fitted on it, does it? All there, wired up, ready to go. Awesome. That looks really nice and tidy the way they've kind of got it in the... It's nice. And it, what I find is this runs very well through when you're trying to pull it through a motor as well. Okay. <laughs> Just a quick question. Um, do you have to get like a, a professional in to fit this? Or can... No, you can fit it yourself. Okay. Uh, there what kind are... of level of skills do you need to kind of... You need to be pretty good DIY skills, but your okay. average yachtsman generally tends to be up okay. to that standard. Uh, so yeah, no problem. What I do ask for people is just for peace of mind to get yep. them to send photos of the installation so I can see the main components and oh, make right. sure there's nothing unsafe in there. Okay. I'm happy to do that. As I well. suppose the important ones to make sure the exhaust pipe's connected and sealed and all Absolutely. that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And do you, does it come with a CO2 alarm? Do you fit one or how does it work? I will be doing that from now on on every okay. install I do uh, awesome. and we'll be putting them on our web shop as well. Okay, awesome. <laughs> What's next? So, um, fuel pump cable, right, okay. uh, which comes without the plug on the end so you can thread it through the boat oh. without any problems. Um, okay. So do you have to turn the fuel pump on? No, that's oh, it's just plugged straight into the heater and it's controlled by the microprocessor. And okay. um, so the only like other Christmas. loose bits is now our display. Uh, this one is what they call the PU27, which has finally come with some nice new bits of it. One is an instruction manual in English. <laughs> That's for my kids. <laughs> and uh, the other one is they finally made a mounting bracket for oh, the awesome. display to go on. And there's your display. Well, that's there. nice and neat, isn't it? So what can this do? Is it is it timed? Is it what can you do with this? Yeah, you, you've got three timers that you can set. Okay. Um, you can put those on. It, it, can, it also comes with stickers, so you can stick it on instead of that. And you get a couple of screws as well for the oh, right, okay. in the kit. Nice and neat. Um, well, yeah, neat. you can you can set a timer to come on every day. Yep. Um, uh, or at a particular time on a particular day. Okay. Uh, it will come on for two hours and then turn off again. Right. Uh, here's the plastic fuel pipe, which okay. we don't use on boats. Um, we use copper. Um, cause is that the regulations or just? Yeah, it's regulations. Is that? Uh, um, okay. Certainly for inland waterways and sea, um, there's a recreational craft directive. Okay. We need to use copper on it. Right, so I'm guessing in a lot of parts of Europe, if you were taking this boat to France, for instance, yeah. you'd have to use copper pipe and all the rest. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. they're pretty hot and things like that over there. So. Yeah. It's uh, I've forgotten the actual 
<laughs> it's an ISO regulation it has to go to, but I can't remember the standard up the top of my head. Okay. Um, we'll look that up. We'll look that standard up. Yeah. <laughs> um, the exhaust silencer. Okay. Lots of people have asked me in the past, are they suitable for marine use? Because there's an awful lot on the market that looks similar, uh, and they're not fully welded around the edges. These oh, ones are all fully welded, so they are gas tight. Right, um, okay. So you can use them on marine use. And what do you know metal that's made from? It is stainless steel. It's stainless steel? Oh, right, okay. That's a stainless piece of kit. Yeah. <coughs> we have an intake air silencer. Right. For the combustion side. So that's why I went wrong when I fitted my own. I did put one of these on there. It was quite <laughs> noisy. <laughs> makes quite a difference. Does that? that does actually make more difference than the exhaust silencer. Oh, okay. And what we'll do now is pull the hole out of here now. So what model is this then? This is the... This is a 44D 12 volt version. Okay. And this is the 4 kilowatts. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. How do you work out whether you use the 4 kilowatt or the 2.2 for instance? Basically, uh, what they say on the two kilowatt is that they will do up to around thirty-three foot. Okay. And uh, that, you know, but it's there is actually a square meterage volume okay. that they do as well because it depends on the design of boat. Uh, but normally, I say up to thirty foot, you're fine with the two kilowatt, yeah. unless you're expecting it to be twenty-four, twenty-five degrees in there. Okay. In which case, you might want to go for the larger one. Is this a lot more money to go? So, if I was thinking, right, okay, so I might go for the two kilowatt one. How much more is this one to go for the four kilowatts? Are like these are only fifty pounds. More, There's fifty so pounds difference between two kilowatt and four kilowatt. Okay, for my brain enough. So, so often the restricting factor is the, yeah. the physical size of the heating. Okay. Uh, these are quite a bit bigger, yeah. and also the physical size of the ducting. Um, okay. Because it's 90 millimeter on these, and it's 60 on the two kilowatt. Right. So when you're feeding the pipes through to the different rooms, you yeah. need more space. Okay. Yep. Um, there's a fuel pump. Uh, these are a German, a German top quality one. That's good. And Plan are, are a Russian company, are they? That's right. And these are made in Russia, or are they made in China? Yeah. Or these are all made in Russia. All made in Russia. Samara. Okay. And how long have they been going for? Uh, since 1992, okay. uh, and uh, they were originally supplied to the military and uh, okay. public services over there. And I'm guessing it's pretty cold compared to, Absolutely. you know, mainland, well, to, to this part of the world. It's probably a lot colder in Russia than it is here, so Definitely. it works out over there. Yeah, they, they're rated down to minus 50. Really? So, uh, wow. <laughs> minus 50? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> I wish that we'd probably be dead anyway. So here's the, there's some exhaust uh, heat shield, which is actually very good stuff to be honest. It okay. works very well. And inside it is the fuel pickup that you can install into your own tank. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Um, you can then cut that to the length that you want. So you leave it a little bit short at the bottom so that it doesn't run out. We were talking completely. about that, yeah. <laughs> um, and here's the heat So itself. the idea behind that is instead of it reaching to the bottom of the tank, and then you would accidentally leave it on and use up all your fuel in your in your main fuel tank. You cut it off slightly higher so that you've then got that much left to, to run your, your boat engine. So that's a really good tip there. Excellent, thank you. Um, there's the heater itself. Okay, so how does that work? So what goes where we... <coughs> if we look in the, the smaller end, okay. uh, there is a fan inside there. Yep. And that basically drags air in. There's a big aluminium lump in the middle which gets hot. Okay. I'll explain that bit now. And then, so that heats the air as it comes through, and it comes out the other end hot. Okay. Um, that's done by, see these are all the connectors for the electronics. Yeah. Okay, so we've got air and fuel going in here. That, basically, there's a mesh inside just in front of the jet where the, the diesel comes into. Yeah. Uh, and it's got a wire mesh. That's heated up by the glow plug okay. inside. Uh, makes it red hot. As soon as the fuel hits it, it combusts. It combusts. And then the other end of that same fan has another tiny fan which sucks air in through here and blows the exhaust out. Okay, that's that simple then. Um, and yeah, that's it. So as soon, so you use the glow plug to warm it up, get it up yep. to temperature. Once it's established a flame, there's a sensor in the exhaust which tells it that it's reached temperature it's and temperature. it's now supporting itself. And then it'll turn the glow plug off and okay. it'll start ramping up a the fuel and the air, and it'll just ramp up to full power then. Okay.
Did they require servicing? It doesn't look like it's very kind of accessible no. to get inside. So once it's, it's fitted, that's there's, it. There's no servicing required at all. Um, awesome. The only things you would obviously look for is hey, if you had any CO issues or you yep. get any funny smells inside or you see lots of smoke coming out of the exhaust, then that indicates there's a problem. You play, okay. Otherwise, you're fine. You do get with these um, a service kit that comes with them anyway. Okay. Uh, so there's a full gasket set in there if you had to ever split it. Right. Um, but that's probably better done by a dealer or kind of a absolutely somebody yeah. who knows what they're doing with them. I'm assuming. Basically, the only reason you're going to need that is if there's an issue with this, and if there's an issue with this, it's probably better to refer to your warranty and, and get it sorted that way. Absolutely. I would imagine. Okay. Absolutely. Unless you're particularly skilled at that kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> and then there's the exhaust, which okay. uh, slots on there. And then this this goes round it, does it, to stop it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that looks pretty straightforward. Yeah. And there's a pack of bits there with all the sort of stuff that you may need for installing. Yeah. Do you keep, um, do you have these in stock? Yes, I do. So I if I phoned up today and said, right, I want a four kilowatt heater. Yeah. Um, how long will it take you to get it to me? Normally, if you if you place an order before 12 o'clock, yeah. uh, it will go out the same day and you should get it the next day. Wow, um, it's that quick. And you've always got them in stock? Always. You've never run out of stock? Yeah. Okay. If this breaks down tomorrow, okay, it's on the boat, it's fixed on the boat, you've gone, you have the money, how does that work? What do you, does it, do you come back and kind of take it away and repair it, or do I send it to you and it gets repaired? How, what do we do with that? In, in the unlikely event of that, I yep. would ask you to, to send it back to me, okay. uh, first of all. Or quite often, I, it's something silly that I can resolve over the telephone oh, anyway, right, okay. or via email. Or so they don't, they don't break down very often? Not very often, no. no okay. I think I've had less than 1% failure rate. Oh, well, that's very good. Mm. So, uh, yeah, Compared to good. some that yeah. being bought online. Indeed. Yeah. So I've noticed that, I'm going to ask you, this is going to put you on the spot now, a bit of an awkward question for me, <laughs> but that's what we're here for. I can go on to eBay and I can get one for 150 quid. Yep. Right? And it's, it doesn't say where it's from or whatever, but I'm assuming perhaps China or something. Yeah. Why would I not buy that rather than one of these? What's, what's the difference? Why am I paying? Basically, what you get with these yep. is you've got, uh, they've got high quality glow plug, uh, which they uprated for the European market anyway. Okay. Fuel pump is also uprated. Um, I've seen a lot of those. Uh, heaters online and they do have an awful lot of glow plug failures um, okay. so you'd be looking at possibly replacing one of them at, to get a reasonably good one yeah. about £50 on top of what you've already paid anyway. So then it starts kind of ramping up to kind of nearer this yeah. price anyway. I, I've actually tested one on the bench and they're very very noisy. Are they? Uh, very noisy. Okay. And there's zero protection for the circuit board from moisture or anything. And so they're not really inside. particularly suitable for the marine environment? Absolutely. Okay. Do you um, still have that one uh, the Chinese one fitted at home? I do, yes. Right, okay, so we'll get some footage of that and just see how noisy yeah. it is and have a look at the circuit board. Yeah. Great, okay. Um, Let's get it fitted, I'm these, bloody freezing. The, the big thing with these is they've got the brushless fan motor and Why? that'll do 10,000 hours operating time okay. without any servicing um, and it's much, much quieter. Wow, 10,000 hours is a lot. That's a lot of time on a boat, isn't it, to kind of... Um, Awesome. So would you suggest that we use this or would you suggest that we put it in our tank given that we, we're going to be using the boat a lot? Because you've already had a previous install, yeah. um, we will use your pickup that's already there. Okay. You've already got copper pipe running through, so we'll, we're we'll going to just fit it straight go to that. onto that. Where the with a normal boat though, would you suggest that you use a tank or would you normally, normally fit one of those? Personally, I wouldn't mess about with a tank. Yeah. I, I would use this. Um, <laughs> Except in the case of my own boat, where the, the fuel tank <laughs> on the boat is 40 litres, and anything less than half tank, I find that it sucks air in anyway, so I don't want anything else drawing off that tank as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm gonna, I've got a slightly larger version of this tank that I'm going to put in just for the heater. Okay. So for your average person, how long would this take to fit, do you reckon? Uh, I'd reckon it on a couple of days, really. Right, um, okay. If you've not done one before, a couple of days to go and get it working properly. And there's anything in particular they need to look out for? I mean, I'm, I repeat myself, but I'm guessing just make sure you connect that exhaust pipe properly and make sure that's sealed Definitely. so there's no CO2. Definitely. One of the things I get asked a lot yep. is the fuel pump angle. Uh, okay. Some of the manuals say fit it vertically with the outlet upwards, which uh, there's an arrow on there, and it, but it's the end with the plug on is the, is the outlet side. Um, they also ask, should it go above the tank or below? Yeah. Uh, but basically, 
what you want to do is come off the bottom of the tank if you can, come in, and I normally fit them at about 45 degrees. Okay. The reason for that is it's much easier for the air to get through and out without any air getting stuck inside the oh, pump. Right, okay. um, that'll make it last longer because it's all lubricated with diesel then. Right. Um, and the air will come out easier. And if you can run it uphill from there into the heater, yep. that also promotes getting the air out as well. Okay. Um, what you do before is fine, and if it does draw uphill, it's not ideal, but on a lot of boat installations there's no choice, um, right. but that is fine. They do say, however, that it should be within a metre of the tank, yeah. um, so and then do the long run in the other part, okay. uh, which can be tricky on some boats, but generally that's doable. With this unit, how, long, how much fuel do you reckon it uses per... You'd use, on this one flat out, I think you would use about uh, two litres a day. Two litres a day, that's not too bad at all. Yeah. And what does it draw amp, amp hours? Do you know what it draws? Per uh, it's 60 watts. 60 watts? Uh, yeah, okay. full power, or 10 watts once it ramps down to low power. Okay, awesome. So, uh, yeah, Fantastic. Good. They draw about 10 amps when they start up with the glow plug on. And then that goes down to? Uh, 0.6 at the very lowest. Oh wow, so it's not an awful lot. But no. Brilliant stuff. Right, let's get it fitted. I can't wait. Yeah. I think it would be quite interesting for people to see how it literally comes to bits, that's all. Yeah. So, ones, like I say, are a bit of fiddle though. Yeah, yeah. So when you're doing a normal install, there should be no reason to, to have to do this, no? No. Okay, that would be interesting to see what's inside. Exchanger. Okay. So you've got the fan on the end, which yep. is a double fan. So part of it draws the combustion air in at the bottom through there mm -hmm. and then blows it through the combustion chamber and out of the exhaust. Okay. And it also draws air in there across everything here and out that end. You've got the glow plug there. Uh, there's a temperature sensor in the exhaust, which I mentioned before. Yep. Um, circuit board, waterproofed and oh, everything right, okay. covered, so it's... Uh, What's the mesh for? Um, I think it's just to hold it in place oh. and stop rattling, to be honest. Um, then there's a temperature sensor on the end, which is the overheat sensor. Yeah. Um, and that's it, really. And that's that's it. A kit. That looks quite good, actually, on the inside. You, you don't mm. often, you know, you don't really get the occasion to see inside. Them, no. Right? That's why I thought it'd be quite a good one, because they yeah. don't look good. Very good. Very impressive. Right everyone, this is the heater we have at the moment. Is that one there, is it? Yeah, that one up on the wall there. Yeah. yeah. And what is that? Uh, it's a Mercunian water-based system. Uh, so it heats the water and then it go around radiators and whatever, okay. and it exchanges around the boat with a pump pushing it around. Okay. So you're going to take that out? Or? Yes, we'll take that out altogether. Uh, all the electronics uh, involved with it, so that's that big black box on the wall as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then just this side of that, there's a fuel pump on the wall with a copper pipe coming off it. That one there. All right, yeah. And we'll replace that that pump with our pump, and, uh, and then we'll have to run air ducting from there and the rest of the boat. Okay. Nice one. So what's that, what's that thing you're fitting on there then, what's that? That's the combustion air intake, uh, which okay. has a silencer built into oh, it as right. well, and makes a lot of difference to the noise. Because I had a friend who bought the che a cheaper model than that, and it didn't have one of those on there. No, that's, so that's, that's one of the things they're missing out, is it? Absolutely, okay. yeah, the, these are included in all our kits. And that makes quite a bit of difference? A lot of difference, a lot. Okay. The one that uh, we're going to add some footage of, uh, the 
the, the, the cheaper version. Oh, the Chinese one. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't have that. No. Okay. No. It has what they call an air filter on the end, but it doesn't silence okay. it at all. Okay. So we'll uh, bring you that footage as well. We like filming tricky bits because it makes you uh, <laughs> excellent when you get it right. <laughs> Just getting that cab beautifully clever alongside the other one. Just get tight sometimes. So how long have you been working in the boat trade then, Owen? Uh, I started as a dinghy instructor uh, after I left college. and. Um, I had 10 years out of it, but uh, yeah. um, apart from that, I've done it all the time, I guess 25 years or so. How did you go from dinghy, in, you know, a teaching dinghy instructor or whatever to, to this? Um, what was because I'd done engineering in college, um, oh, right, okay. I went across and ended up being an electrical specialist for yeah. Sunsail, okay. uh, and then went out to Greece and worked out there, did a short stint as a um, um, as a flotilla skipper as well, yeah. uh, and then went to Palma as base engineer, uh, and uh, and then worked on big boats after that, okay. and then ended up running Palma yachts in Mallorca. Awesome. <coughs> Let's get all this stuff out of here, mate. On the stuff. So there it is, it's kind of on the wall. That pipe that's coming down underneath, that's the air intake. That's the fuel pump that runs along. Uh, where are we? Up the wall here. And then into the top of the tank here. Morning everyone, just come to the marina to see the new heater in action. Good weather tested today. <laughs> let's get this hat shut and let's get the heating on me. Turned on. To tell you the current temperature. It doesn't. Yeah, but it will in a second. I'm sure. Um, so this is just a priming. It has to pump the fuel through. It has to get to a certain temperature, and then you'll hear the uh, motor accelerate. We'll leave the cover on for a minute. Let's see how long it takes to. So what time is it now? So, what have we got? It's gone to nine already. We've got the thermostat set for 20. Okay, so we've had it on there for about 15, 20 minutes, I suppose. How warm is it? Is in his t-shirt already? So that's Lovely absolutely jumping. awesome. <laughs> absolutely awesome. Hot air comes out, and this is where the sensor is. Um, so, rather than having the sensor in the back, that's not the area that we really use on the boat, but this is the most important area. So we put an external sensor in here. So that's, that's too hot to put your hand on that, so that's wonderful. Um, I've managed to get my hat and coat off already, and we've only been here for like uh, 15 minutes, so that's pretty good. That's going to extend our sailing season dramatically. I mean, that's, that's you know, we're good to go all year now. That's perfect. So, yeah, good. Okay, so we're just looking at how it's wired in. It goes straight to the battery um, so that you can, you can run it without it being interrupted and having to reset all the... Uh, all the timers and everything. Um, just here, you've got the fuse box, so that's nice and easy to access. It's all kind of, um, it's all connected to the side and stuff, so it's really tidy. Uh, really easy to access, it's right here. So yeah, uh, the wiring all comes ready. So it's literally just kind of thread it through, 
put it onto here, tighten up, you're good to go. Don't forget to put your Lanagran grease on here. <laughs> there you go, Pete. So I've just pressed the shutting down now, and what it'll do is keep pushing um, air through so that it actually cools the unit down. Um, some of the cheaper ones don't do that, um, and it can cause problems, they can melt, etc. etc. This just trickles air through and cools the whole unit down, which is what you want. <laughs>